Okay, so my favorite way to show students stuff is to show them exactly what it's going to look like on their iPad. And the way to do that is screen recording. So the first thing you need to do is turn on screen recording. So you're going to go to your settings. Then you're going to scroll down over here on the side where it says control center. Then you're going to do customize controls. You are going to scroll. So these are ones that you already have. These are ones that you can add and you can look at those and play around with those. But the one you need to add is screen recording. So I've added that and that means that anytime I access my control center, I will have the option to start a screen recording. So you access your control center by swiping down from the corner and it pulls up, this is your control center. So this one right here is screen recording. So to start a screen recording, I just tap it. It gives me a little count in and then once it actually starts recording, I know it has started because it has this little red bar up in the corner. To stop the recording after you're done doing whatever you're going to do, you're going to tap on it. It's going to ask you if you want to stop. You're going to stop and then it saves it to your photo so then you can upload it to Google Classroom or whatever. Another thing that at least for me is important, I don't necessarily want to do a screen recording and then separately record audio for it. I would rather like record it all at once. Um, so you can swipe down and then you can hold down on this and you can turn the microphone on. And as soon as you've turned it on, it's going to stay on every single time you do a screen recording unless you go back and turn it off. So I'm going to leave that on and then I can start a screen recording the exact same way. I would tap it, it would count me in, then it would start recording and then I would tap the little red bar whenever I was done. Now, that's great, um, but what if you're wanting to show students, okay, first you click here, first you click here, whatever. Um, they can't see where your finger is touching. So I have a workaround for that. It's not perfect, um, but I think it's pretty good and it's the best that I've found. So what you need to do is go to your settings again and over here on the side, you are going to go to accessibility. And this will um, bring up this menu. And what you want to do is scroll down here and you want to use your accessibility shortcut and use it for assistive touch. And then I'm going to go over here to my control center, customize control, and then turn on my accessibility shortcuts. So that means whenever I swipe down, I now have this and that's how I turn on assistive touch. So now I'm going to show you how to set up your assistive touch to use it like a cursor so that students can see where you are moving your finger on the screen. So I'm going to go back to accessibility. I'm going to click on touch and then I'm going to click on assistive touch. So I'm going to click the little switch at the top to turn assistive touch on. And it'll bring up this little thing. It may not be here. It may be somewhere else on yours, but that basically means that your assistive touch is on. You can also turn it on and off by using this little button that you just did. So you don't have to go into settings every time you can also, and this is my favorite way to turn on and off assistive touch is to tap the home button three times. So that way, whenever you push it three times, it turns it on and off. And it's much easier than swiping down or doing this. But I did want to show you all the ways that you can turn it on. What you need to do is you need to create a new gesture. And all you need to do is just tap on it. That's it. And then click Save. And I'm going to call this Cursor. So that way I remember why I created it. Now, it has these little custom actions things. What you want to do is leave single tap as none and you want to change double tap to that custom one that you just made called cursor. So that means whenever I double tap the assistive touch, whenever I have it turned on, it's going to turn into a cursor. And let me show you what that looks like. So that's fine. If you wanted to, you could have long press set up as something, you know, you can, you can play around with this and do a lot more than just use it as a cursor, but this is how I use it. Um, so if I double tap on this, then I have a cursor and I'm going to switch to using my Apple pencil so that you can kind of see it a little bit better, but basically it looks like this. And so if I were to tap the Google classroom app, it shows that I'm tapping that. Now, one of the things I said, this is not perfect and it's not anytime you get into an app, it turns your assistive touch off and you have to turn it back on. So every, if you're doing a screen recording where you're going in and out of multiple apps, every time you turn it off or every time you switch to a new app, you have to turn it back on. And if you go too long without using it, it auto turns off. So I'm going to click here. And then everywhere that I tap, you can see that students are seeing where it is that I'm tapping. So instead of having to tell them, click the three lines, you can show them as you're telling them. And then if you want to turn this off, 
you just tap it once because we set single tap to no gesture. So anytime you tap it once, it turns it off. And this is good because when you have it turned on, you can't swipe uh, because it's using it as a cursor. So if you want to swipe, you'll have to tap it to turn it off. And if you're drawing, the same thing applies. So if I were to draw in here, I can draw normally, but as soon as I turn assistive touch on, well, I can't do anything. So I have to tap, turn it off. And then if I wanted to show students like, oh, now you're gonna switch to the eraser tool, I would double tap. And then begin again, I can't use it. So tap, turn it off, and then you can use it.